Three people are in the inclusivity uh, workshops, and then some person's sick. They don't know where to go. Is that yours? Okay. All right. Instead of that now, it's time to do some physics. And yes, we are continuing with the demon of spinner. I'm so sorry, but it's essential. All right. So um, we're going to kind of wrap up a bit of spinners, although I don't know if I'll get through all four sheets. But um, So last time I introduced where spinners were going to come from, but of course I didn't give you any of the meat underlying spinners, and today we're going to get into the meat underlying spinners. Um, but before I do, remember um, in 3D, we started with a rotation matrix, say a rotation in the xy plane, and then from that we extracted the generators, and in particular the Lie algebra, underlying rotations. And then by solving this for two-dimensional matrices, we found the sigmas. Okay, and you know, you can think of it as a vector, you can just think of it as a set. Okay? And the sigmas are what you exponentiate in order to create the transformation matrix which acts on a two-component object which we call the spinner, okay? At the end of our last talk, we went to four dimensions, so we were dealing with four by four matrices, and we extracted the algebra, although we had to do a little bit of work to get the algebra, right? Because in 4D, we started with R I's and K I's. Oh, were they R's and K's? Well, no, I mean, no. Let's call it a boost matrix. And then when we extracted the algebra, the algebra was a little hairy because using rotations and boosts separately, we got this kind of mixed up algebra where a rotation, two, ro two boosts could give you back a rotation. The rotations formed a subgroup and then the, anyway, so but what we ended up doing was we ended up forming these nice J plus minus operators. Uh, no, hold on. Uh, yeah. I gotta do, I gotta. <laughs> it's caffeine here, I'm getting tired. Uh, yeah, here we go. So, um, we extracted the algebra for the J I's and the K I's, okay? And the algebra between the generators of rotations and the generators of boosts was this mixed up thing. You know, if you took two boosts and did a commutator, you ended up getting back a J, which is kind of weird. So what we ended up forming was these linear combinations um, where we, take, we would take a rotation generator and we would add or subtract I times a boost generator. And then these are what gave us this really nice decomposition of this group into SO3 cross SO3 because the J pluses formed a set which transformed into themselves and represented SO3 and the J minuses formed another set which transformed into themselves formed another SO3 and the J plus and the J minus commuted with each other so these two groups are completely independent of each other okay and then I mentioned to you that well what we need to do if we want to introduce spinners is take each of those SO3s and turn it into an SU2, okay? So the question is, what are the analogs of sigma i, sigma j, and sigma k for this four-dimensional case, all right? So in the rotations in three-dimensional case, of course, 
we went from three-dimensional rotation matrices down to two-dimensional rotation uh, generators. In 4D, we expect to go from four-dimensional rotation and boost matrices to how many dimensional generators? Hunter. This Hunter. This one? Yeah. How many? What dimensionality do we expect for the generators of SU2 cross SU2? Four. Four. Yeah. So we expect to get four by four matrices for the generators in this case. Okay. And that's the first thing we're going to do is build what those generators should be. Okay. And I have to admit, it's going to be a little subtle. There's a anomaly in what I've done to you so far, which we are going to uncover in this discussion. Um, oh shoot. Okay, so there are numerous ways to get at what we need here. We could just solve this algebra uh, looking for this particular structure. Um, and that's the way we, of course, uncovered the sigma i's and the sigma j's. But I'm actually going to go to the deepest realization of sigma i and sigma j. Because remember, this interpretation of sigma i and sigma j as representing half or the square root of the geometry. Okay? Where this is, of course, an anti-commutator instead of a commutator. So you multiply them and then you add the reverse form. And remember that I claimed that the delta ij in this expression is actually the metric of the three-dimensional space in which these transformations are happening. Now look, this is a confusing expression. It's a, it's a set of, or it's a formula for two by two matrices, because these are two by two matrices. That's a two by two matrix, okay? But it's a set of two by two matrix equations that are indexed by i and j. So how many, how many versions of the equation are there? Three by three. Nine, nine. nine, yes, good, good, excellent. I think you guys can multiply after a minute or two. Maybe you have to get your calculators out. I don't know. Yeah, but there, this represents nine different equations. Each of those equations is two by two matrices. That's the way we interpret this. Everybody on board? You should? Okay. Um, now, this led to the, sorry, the transformation of a two-component spinner that we could write as e to the i over 2 sigma dotted with theta times chi, where the sigma dot theta is just code for sigma x, and then you just give me a different angle for each one. Okay. That's all sigma dot theta is. It's a, each generator, each sigma matrix gets paired with an independent angle. Okay? So now let's talk about 4D. In 4D, I could try and write an equation like this down. Okay, I would just start with the idea that these four-dimensional spinners are going to be unearthing the square root of the geometry. So, the other Hunter. There you are. Hunter, can you help me bang out what you think this next equation would look like? How many equations do you think we would have. What is the dimensionality of the matrices we expect? Like, we would be doing four by four, right? Yeah, so how many places? 16, yeah, yeah, okay. And we're gonna have to give a new symbol, we're not gonna use sigma. So I'm just gonna write something I'll call gamma. 
And then instead of i and j, where i, j just runs over 1, 2, 3, we're going to use mu and nu because mu and nu run over t, x, y, z. So we'll do mu and nu. Okay. Now what about the right-hand side? What do you think? Do you think we need a 2? Probably. Yeah. Good, good, good. I like it. I like it. Ah, the metric. What do you think we should put in for the metric? Uh, probably Is the metric of relativity? So, I, granted, I just said four dimensions, but I mean four dimensions Minkowski space. Gonna phone a friend? Yeah. Phone a friend. Oh, yeah. <laughs> uh, negative one, one, one. Oh, it's the Hunter interchange, and you're on the opposite sides of the room. That's crazy. Yeah, but we just normally call that eight and nu. Okay, where bear in mind this is a matrix which is minus one, 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 one. Okay, and then what do we need for this? That would just be. Wouldn't that just be i is four by four? Yes, i four by four. Now I want you to notice and be careful. This is a 4x4 four four matrix, and this is a 4x4 four four matrix. You might be tempted to multiply them by each other. Don't. The in, remember, this, these subscripts are telling me that this is an array of 16 equations. Each of those expressions are given by 4x4 four four matrices, which are hung on these. This is a matrix in spin space. This is a matrix in space time. Okay? You can't just say, just because I got two 4x4 four four matrices, I can multiply them together. Yes, Avery? So why do we need the I4x4? Four four? Because if I did not put I4x4 four four there, then you might think that the right-hand side of this is a 4x4 four four matrix, because this is a 4x4 four four matrix. And this is a 4x4 four four matrix, but the left-hand side of this is not a 4x4 four four matrix. It's 16 4x4 four four matrices. Each of these gammas is a 4x4 four four matrix, but there are 16 of them. Does that make sense? Yeah. So I need to tell you the right-hand side is 16 4x4 four four matrices. Okay. Okay? I know it's weird. Yeah, sorry about that. <laughs> okay, now here's an interesting observation. How many solutions for gamma do we expect? I mean, this is, a, this is 16 equations, you know, we can solve it because we know the metric, we know the identity, we know the number two, so I can find out what the gammas look like. So how many gammas do you expect? Four. Four, gamma zero, gamma one, gamma two, gamma three. Okay, so then we can say, all right, if I have a spinner and I want to transform it, I'll just do e to the i over 2, psi, or not psi, gamma, gamma vector dotted with, and I'll, I'll call it theta, you know, just to give it a name, psi. Okay? It's clear to everybody? I'm really just, I'm replicating what I did in two dimensions. This clear? We're good? All right, what's wrong with it? Four things. So in six things. Six things, six splits. Six uh, transformations. Mm -hmm. There's only, uh, well, no, the, the theta vector would match the number of components of the gamma. It's just a. I would say instead of like gamma dot theta, we should have Minkowski inner product, maybe. Um, well, no, no, no. Gabriel said the right answer. Look, we just said that if we solved this, we'd get four solutions. These are supposed to be the generators of the group. Remember, the sigmas are the generators of SU2. But how many generators? of the group do we expect? Six. Three from this one, three from this one. Is that six? 
No, that's four. Where are the other two? Is there huh? That would be a solution, but unfortunately, it's not going to be the solution. So let me just show you. And look, this is this is what what's the problem? Is the problem we always have. And when I unearth that, you'll be like, oh yeah, I knew that. <laughs> okay, here's the problem. In our very bad notation. We are writing sigma 1, sigma 2, sigma 3, okay? Or sigma x, sigma y, sigma z, it doesn't matter, okay? What does this generate? What does this generate? Okay, sorry, let me do this. What does this generate? A rotation in the... I have it labeled as a rotation around the x-axis, but I heard a lot of smart people say the rotation of the yz plane. Yeah. Ah, uh, what's what's the problem? Tell me. Well, if those are rotations in the yz plane, then when you're in four dimensions, you have you should have six generators because there's time. Exactly. Okay. Remember, rotations are not rotations about an axis. They're a rotation in a two-dimensional plane. So what we should really have labeled these as, and this is the step which is technically going to help us, is the following. We should have labeled these in terms of the results of the Clifford algebra. I mean, this gave us sigma 1. 1 means x, 2 means y, and 3 means z. Okay? So this gives us sigma 1, but if we define these in terms of the Clifford algebra, then we have a very natural way of defining the generators for this group. Okay? Yeah, Ross? Oh, sorry. No, no, I'm not asking. Okay. So then, what we should think of to save ourselves and to generate all of these is that our generators are not these matrices. Just like the generators in the SU2 case are not these matrices, they are these expressions. The big difference is there's three of these and there's three of these. There are four of these, but there are six analogs of this. Okay, and I'll write them down. So we can take this Clifford algebra and solve it for these matrices. But I don't want to say these are the generators of the group. These are the generators of the group. Because each of these references a plane. Whereas these don't reference a plane, these just reference a, an axis. Although remember, Yeah, well, it's, it's kind of tied to coordinates in space-time, but not really. 
Okay, so um, now uh, there's a little bit of a, of a trickiness here because um, I don't think we can write gamma dot theta because gamma, if it carried one index, then I could kind of let, you know, talk about it as a vector and then dot it with something which also has one index. Um, so what we're going to do instead is we're going to define the transformation in terms of sigma mu nu, omega mu nu, times psi. And that's going to be our final expression for a Spinner's transformation. And now let me show you what these things are. The sigma mu nu's are just the set of sigma 0, 1, sigma 0, 2, sigma 0, 3. And these are basically each of these. Okay, so this is just a labeling scheme. Sigma 0, 1 is that guy right there. Now an important observation, this is related to sigma 1, 0 in what way? Yeah, so this is minus sigma 1, 0. Because if you change the 0, 1 to 1, 0, all you're doing is flipping the order of this, which brings in a minus sign. It's a coming here. Everybody on board? Okay. So all of these you compare with minus the opposite or the reverse index notation. Omega mu nu, we can define as a set of alpha, beta, gamma boost parameters and then rotation angles. But we might as well just call these by the numbers, omega 0, 1, omega 0, 2, omega 0, 3, omega 1, 2, omega 2, 3, omega 3, 1. And then what we need is for each of these to also be reversed. Okay? And now let's see that it works out to give me a transformation that I might expect. Okay. So let me just do an example. If I want to do a rotation in the YZ plane by an angle phi, okay? Ian. Ian. What does omega mu nu look like? Yeah, but what are the values? Oh, what are the values? Oh, um, I'm not sure. Oh. <laughs> but what about all these? These are the, this is how much you're boosting along the x-axis. This is how much you're boosting along the y, how much you're boosting along the z. This is how much you're rotating in the x-y plane, how much you're rotating in the y-z plane, how much you're rotating in the z-x plane. How much are we boosting? So just zero there. Zero. Zero, 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 five, zero. Yeah. Say again? What five? Five. Oh, oh, Sorry, not five. <laughs> Sorry, I know I screamed that out a bit loud. Okay, so now let's actually look at how the spinner transforms. Okay, we have e to the i over four. Sigma mu nu, omega mu nu. Look, all of these indices are repeated. Mu nu, mu nu. So that means I sum over all of them. Okay? Now, most of the omega mu nu's are zero, right? So I don't have to worry about those. But how many 
Omega mu nu's are not zero. Who says one? Who says two? It's two. Okay? Because omega two three is not zero, but so is omega three two. Okay? I know. I know. So this is going to be sigma two three times omega two three plus sigma three two times omega three two. But how are these two things related? They're equivalent because sigma three two is minus sigma two three and omega three two is minus omega two three. So the two minuses cancel and this just gives you a factor of two which is why there's a factor of four there because at the end of the day, this is e to the i over two sigma two three omega three two times psi. Isn't omega two three? Uh, yes. Sir. Okay, so all I'm doing is I'm telling you why there's a four. Okay. Any questions about this? Yeah. Was the two introduced in the first place because of the relation between the generators and the um, sigma matrices in two dimensions? Well, where does that two come from? Uh, that two is going to be a convention. In the same way that this two is a convention. Because we, we could have said the GX is sigma X over two and written the expression for these spinners in terms of just the generators G. So the, the, the sigmas are not technically the generators, sigma over two is the generator. But we really love sigmas, so we've got to add this half sitting out front and it's going to be the same down here. So I'm going to give you these things, okay? But these are technically not the generators. You got to do a half. The, the, these matrices were not necessarily discovered in solving the Lie algebra. So that's why they have sort of a, a, a secondary existence, but they're obviously important in the Lie algebras. Okay. All right, so without any further ado, it's time to see what the hell these gammas look like. And yeah, I guess I'll just like some of this and probably have to write half of the back. Okay. The gammas are called the rat gamma matrices. And I'm only going to give you one version of them because there's a gazillion different versions of them. These are the ones, these are the iteration that we are going to use in this class. So these are four by four matrices as promised. So any number you see is actually a two by two. Okay, so this is the identity, zero, two by twos. And then the sigmas are obviously two by two matrices. Okay, so just as, a, as an example, just to write it up there. Two 
by that's what your four by four uh, gamma two matrix would look like. All right. Now these have some nice properties. Uh, first of all, recall. Of course, like I said, I erased stuff, and I'll probably have to bring it right back. Um, and I, I'm uh, yeah. So let's see what I have written here. Oh no, I was writing them with a parentheses. That's good. All right. So um, remember that gamma mu nu anti commutator is two, eta mu nu i uh, four by four, and I might have written a lower mu nu earlier, and I certainly didn't mean to. Oh no, I guess I did write. Did I write eta lower mu nu previously? Yeah. Yeah. The left hand side is also lower. Yeah. Everything should be raised. Sorry. Um, Uh, okay, so let's see some interesting stuff. Uh, what is gamma zero squared? What happens if I take this matrix and I multiply it by itself? I'll give you a hint, don't look at that. You look at it? Nope, can't look at it. You sure? Nope. Who's doing it this way? Who's doing it? Yes, it's okay. <laughs> Who's doing it this way? Ross, I see you raising your hand. Ross is the hand of the entire class. Hey, <laughs> I know, I think he's just stretching over there. <laughs> or waving at me or something. Sorry. Avery. I didn't want my, I didn't want my hand to raise. <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm going to draw a card. Yeah, okay, I got it. No, 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 I'm going to draw a card. Daniel. Yeah, you're fine. Don't worry about it, dude. It's, it's okay. So if I, if I use this expression, how do I get gamma zero squared? Make them both gamma zero. I make them both gamma zero, and so what's the left-hand side? If both of these are gamma zero. Zero. This is an anti-commutator, not a commutator. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, this is 2 gamma 0 squared. Just remember, you, you multiply them and then you add them to the reverse. So you're adding this to itself and that's... Okay, so what does this become? Yes! God, you're good. <laughs> Jesus, you're good. What does this become? Um, this is the metric. What does it become? <laughs> what is the zero zero component of the space? <laughs> oh, negative one. Yeah, it's negative one. And then a four by four identity matrix. Okay? So at the end of the day, what would we write that gamma zero squared is? It's equal to minus the identity which I'll just call one, but one is secretly the identity, okay? Because the twos cancel, this is minus one times the identity, okay? I mean, if it makes you feel better, I'll put a little top and bottom on my identity, but I usually write it as one. But you just have to understand, this is four by four matrix, so the right-hand side has to be a four by four matrix. So if I write one, it's the identity, okay? So what about gamma I squared? Let me pick a name. Oh, shit. <laughs> it's me. <laughs> oh, my gosh. Oh, shit. Um, <laughs> am I? Um, so if I make this gamma i squared, um, so this becomes. 2 gamma i squared. Oh, fuck. How does that become? <laughs> I think it becomes a half. Can I, can I phone a friend? <laughs> Shit. <laughs> um, I'll put a question mark there for you. Eta uh, 1, 1, though, or eta i, i is, is plus 1, because if you're in a spatial part, and that's what I mean by the i and the j and the k, it's just x, y, z. 
then the, the spatial part of the metric is a one. And then I got a four by four matrix. So, um, so yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. So this is question mark over two times the identity matrix. There you go, all right, so. Um, no, I'm just kidding, okay. So the T's cancel again and now we have the identity. So gamma zero squared is minus the identity, but gamma I squared is positive the identity. And then we also have the following. Um, what if I have gamma mu, gamma nu, plus gamma nu, gamma mu, where mu is not equal to nu? What is that equal to? Ah, I'll draw a card. I'll draw a card. Draw a bean. Wouldn't it just be a Kronecker delta? Well, I'm specifying that. Oh, it's zero. It's zero, yeah. Because remember, this is a diagonal matrix. So if I'm saying mu, nu are different, then I'm off diagonal, which means I'm zero. Okay? Which, of course, means that gamma mu, gamma nu is equal to... Minus gamma nu, gamma mu. The gamma matrices anti-commute with each other. Okay? Okay, and then last but not least, we can, well not last but not least, but getting there. Uh, we can take these gamma matrices and we can form the generator. So just to give you an idea, um, if I want to form the generator for a boost along the I direction, then I want to form a gamma zero I because I need zero for time. If I'm boosting, I'm rotating in a time space plane. And so this is the spatial X, Y, or Z, but this is time. And so this is going to be minus I over four commutator of gamma zero, gamma I. And if you actually plug in these matrices and crank it out, you're going to end up with I over two times sigma I zero, zero minus sigma I. And then if I want to do the generator of a rotation, I just set both of the indices to spatial values, and it turns out that this becomes 1 half epsilon i, j, k, sigma k. Uh, and, and I can, I'll, I'll raise this index, but it doesn't really matter. Now, um, hopefully what you're recognizing, and you're probably not, that's why I'm going to tell you, hopefully what you're recognizing is um, these are the generators of transformations on four component spinners which are associated with a particular algebra which is associated with a particular group. And what was that group? Say it again? Lorentz group. Well, it is a Lorentz group, but this is not directly tied to the Lorentz group. That's the coordinate-based four by four matrices, J and K and so forth. Um, and, I, and that actually gave me, a, if I mixed it up right, an SO3 cross SO3 group. What group does this belong to? SU2 cross SU2. Okay, so a spinner is going to have four components. And these are size, they're not fours. Okay, the first two components are associated with that SU2, and the last two components are associated with the second SU2. Moreover, the transformations of them 
of each of these two component things is just using the standard two by two poly matrices. Because I mean, how is this going to behave when it acts on this? This sigma i in the upper left is going to act on the first two, and this minus sigma i in the bottom right is going to act on the second two, and the same is going to happen with the rotations. Okay, so you see a clean break, right? No? Possibly? I just want you to remember that this is not psi 0, psi x, psi y, psi z. Okay, it is not at all. In order to get the Lorentz group to break down into SO3 cross SO3, we had to form those plus and minus combinations of the generators. Okay, so that, and then we just switched SO3 to SU2. So we're not working with a four component spinner where there's a time like an X, Y, and a Z. That's, that's bullshit. You're just gonna have to play it like this. This at least is a two component thing. This is a two component thing and they're associated with these different factors in the group. Okay, but I can't say that this is time and X and this is Y and Z. T, X, Y, Z are over both of these. Okay. Any questions? So happy. All right. Now, and of course, you can fully expect that on your next homework assignment, you're going to play games with these gamma matrices. Okay. Um, let's see what I want to hang on to. Uh, yeah, I'm sure there's a lot of stuff I want to hang on to, but I won't be able to. So I'll just you know, keep the gammas up there. All right. So, what have we done? We've got a gamma where we know how it transforms, okay? Or oh, sorry, we have a psi, we know how it transforms. And we completely understand the ingredients of this. Okay? We got this. Okay, I mean, it's complicated. You've got to form your sigma mu nus as the anti commutators of different things, and then these are all your parameters. But, you know, that's, we've covered all that. We still haven't said very much about psi, it's just this four component thing. Okay? But before we even say anything about it, um, we. Oh, yeah, we need its dual so that we can form an invariant. invariant. Yeah, yeah, we have not even talked about that. So let's talk about it. Okay, so recall that... Um, for a single SU2, um, we had the following. Um, we built an invariant, the dual spinner daggered, okay, times the original spinner, um, and we realized that psi dagger, or sorry, sorry, psi twiddle, the dual spinner actually is the same as the original spinner, okay? So um, we might try this for our SU2 cross SU2. And let's see how this might work out. Um, okay, so psi twiddle dagger psi is equal to psi dagger psi. Let's just assume that this works again. And now, if I want to transform this Thing. And remember, we want this to be invariant, so we want to get back what we start with. Then I'm going to transform this one, so that'll be psi prime, but I have to dagger it. And then I'll transform this one to psi prime. Okay? Now I know how to transform this. There's the rule.
And then I know how to transform this one. Can everything look good? Yeah. Yeah, great. Thank you. Awesome. Uh, you guys are you guys are really on it. <laughs> Jeez. Okay. So I want to dagger this product. Of mat well, it's a matrix times a vector, but uh, I want to I want to dagger it, which includes transposing. So how does this break down into an operation on each of these? Yeah, you flip the order, so I'm going to end up with psi dagger um, e to the i over 4 sigma mu nu omega mu nu dagger e to the i over 4 sigma mu nu omega mu nu dagger, or, or sorry, psi. Oh, look! If you dagger this, it's basically going to put a minus there, and then what are these two going to do? They're going to cancel. Yeah, actually, it's not that simple. It's not that simple. So when we were doing this for SU2, it actually worked. And it worked because there we had an e to the i over 2 theta vector dot with some angular, uh, sorry, sigma dot theta. Sigma dot theta, psi. And we had to dagger that. And what I said to you when we were talking about just SU2 is this is a vector of real numbers. So daggering it doesn't do shit. Each of the sigmas was Hermitian. So daggering the sigmas didn't do shit. So really, daggering this thing only put a minus in front of the i. These sigmas are not permission. I don't know. Well, they're close, okay? It turns out that if I have sigma zero i, that's the generator of a boost, if I dagger that, I get minus sigma zero i. But if I'm doing the generator of a boost, then it's permission. Okay? So it's not that bad. It's not like I dagger sigma zero i and get like sigma jk or some shit like that. No, it's just a minus sign, but it's, it's a minus sign on one set of these, three of these. Okay? But it, it, it's enough to screw this up because these two things will not cancel in this framework. Okay? Because if I dagger this, any of the boosts generators are going to pick up a minus, I is going to pick up a minus, and that's going to leave an overall plus here, which is certainly not going to cancel that. Okay? So, um, what can we do? What can we do? How can we fix it? That's a really good suggestion. Well, first of all, what assumption did we make in this story? That it is equal. That what? We assumed that it is equal. Yeah, we assumed that psi twiddle was equal to psi. That is, we assumed that the metric <coughs> was just the identity. Maybe we need to change that just a little, just, just a little bit. Okay. And this is what it turns out we need to do. If instead we say psi twiddle is i times gamma zero times psi, turns out that fixes it. Okay? Remember what gamma zero is. So let's see how it works out. don't really care. Okay, so I'm going to plug this in for psi twiddle. Okay. Now, before I even do a transformation, I can go ahead and simplify this because I'm daggering this product of things. 
So I'm going to get minus i psi dagger gamma zero dagger psi gamma zero dagger. Huh? Where's gamma zero dagger? Anybody? Do I need to go over there and draw a card? Yeah. Tell me, what is gamma zero dagger? I'm drawing a card. It's for you guys. Oh, no. Joseph! It's negative gamma. Yeah, it's negative gamma zero. Flipping this doesn't do anything, but that changes the sign. Okay? So that cancels this minus sign, and I'm left with psi dagger. Gamma, zero, psi. Okay. Uh, sorry, uh, there's still an I there. So now if I want to transform this, I'm just going to transform the psi here and the psi here with the usual expression. this standard expression for psi prime. Okay. Again, I've got a dagger this thing. It's a product of stuff. So we're, yeah. Where does the negative sign uh, in front of the i go? Because I replaced gamma zero dagger oh, with negative gamma zero. Okay. So let me dagger this bad boy and this becomes i psi dagger um, e to the i over 4 sigma mu nu omega mu nu dagger gamma 0 e to the i over 4 sigma mu nu omega mu nu times psi and I'm just daggering both of these things which means reversing their order okay and then a miracle occurs A miracle occurs because it turns out that these two things, this exponential and this gamma zero, if you commute them, they become that. If you commute to menu dagger. Now that's not obvious. That's why you're going to prove it in your homework. <laughs> I know. Don't be afraid. It's not that bad. Okay? But this is going to be a homework question. It's showing that this is equivalent to this. But what just happened? Yeah, this guy cancels with this guy, and I'm left with I psi dagger gamma zero psi, oh, holy shit, okay? So it turns out that in order to have an invariant built from your spinners, you can't use the, the metric as the identity. You have to use your metric as i times gamma zero, which is fine. You use what you have to use to make an invariant. So if you want to find a dual spinner, then you do i gamma zero times your original spinner. All right? And just moving forward, we're actually going to define, instead of Twiddle, dagger, and all that crap, we're going to define psi bar as psi twiddle dagger. Okay? Which is, of course, i psi twiddle gamma zero. Or psi dagger gamma zero. Because this is i gamma zero psi, and if you dagger it, then it's going to reverse the order. Okay? 
So psi bar is what we're going to ask you know, to combine with a psi in order to make an invariant. Make sense? This is not intuitive at all. Okay, so you have to let go of your, you know, want to interpret things in terms of x, y, and z, and t, okay? And you have to trust it a little bit. One of the things that it's going to suck, but you'll get used to it. Um, we are, you know, when we're dealing with a vector, we're going to use these indices, mu, nu, and so forth. This has four components, which we can label like with A. But then you might think that these are spatial indices. So we just don't even bother with components to spinorial quantities. Okay, which of course, like I had mentioned last time, it means that you have to be careful with the order of things. But it's also kind of cool because it means at the end of the day, if you want to do calculations, you have to build spinner sandwiches. It was so funny. <laughs> oh man, it's the last time I taught this class, uh, I uh, was doing my spinner sandwiches. And I wrote the word spinner sandwich on the board. And it came to my attention that I do not know how to spell the word sandwich. <laughs> and I spelled the word sandwich wrong my entire life. <laughs> but they corrected me, so I'll get sandwich right when we have to write it. But that's it for today. Thanks, you guys. Yeah, I'm <laughs>